Chapter 38 Religion Bezabab continued further. Now I shall explain to you also a little about that obstruction which served as one of the chief causes for the gradual dilution of the psyche of these unfortunate favourites of yours, and namely, concerning their peculiar Havet Benoni, which they always have, the totality of the functioning and the effects of which, in the common presences of the beings, they themselves call religiousness. Such an, in the objective sense, indeed, arch maleficent factor for the gradual automatic dwindling of their psyche arose there, on this ill star planet. Also, since various consequences of the properties of always the same for them accursed organ, Kunda Buffa, began to be crystallized in them, and changing its outer form, began to be transmitted from generation to generation. And so, when, on the one hand, thanks to these crystallizations, there began to be acquired in the common presences of certain terrestrial three-brainer beings the first germs of what are called Hasmusian properties, in consequence of which such beings began, as is proper to them for their egoistic aims, to invent for the confusion of surrounding beings similar to themselves, various fictions, among which were also every kind of fantastic what are called religious teachings. And when, on the other hand, other of your favourites began to have faith in these fantastic religious teachings and gradually lost their sane mentation, thanks to these same crystallizations, then from that time on there began to arise in the process of the ordinary existence of these strange three brain of beings, a large number of Havet Benoni, or religions, having nothing in common with each other. Although these many varied Havet Benoni or religions of theirs have decidedly nothing in common with each other, yet, nevertheless, all are built up on the religious teachings, which in their turn are built up exclusively on that, in the objective sense, maleficent idea which they themselves called good and evil, and which idea, strictly speaking, was the chief factor for the gradual dilution of their general psyche, and which still quite recently served as the cause of great events among the blissful, higher being bodies, or as they are called there, souls who dwell on that holy planet in the direction of which we are at the present moment falling. The history of all that which recently happened on this holy planet purgatory ought, in my opinion, to be told you without fail, first of all because these events have a common cosmic character and are connected with a general individuality of every relatively separate, separately formed responsible individual. And secondly, because certain members of your genealogical tree involuntarily served as the cause of the arising of these events. But I shall relate about it only at the end of my present tale, as I have a very worthy reason for this concerning the development of your being mentation. About this worthy reason, and also about what considerations I have concerning such an intention of mine, I shall most likely also explain to you in its proper time. Meanwhile, know that there, among these terrestrial three brain beings who please you, there existed, and exists, a great quantity of all kinds of religious doctrines, on which these numerous religions of theirs are just built up, and that they usually arise in the following way. I already told you that when it became clear that thanks to the unforeseenness of certain most 
high sacred cosmic individuals. The results of the consequences of the organ Kundabhafa, invented and later removed by these sacred individuals, began to become crystallized in the common presences of these unfortunate three brain beings, thanks to which it became almost impossible for them correctly to become perfected to the being which three brain beings ought to have. Then our abundantly loving common father condescended to actualize sometimes in the common presences of certain of them, wherever they may arise, the germ of a sacred individual, so that these latter, being completely formed up to responsible age and acquiring reason in the conditions which had already become fixed in the general process of the existence of the three brain beings of this planet, should become aware of reality and indicate to the surrounding beings similar to themselves how they ought, with the reason present in them, to guide the process of the functioning of their separate spiritualized parts, in order in this way to decrystallize the already crystallized consequences of the properties of the organ Kuna Buffer, and also to succeed in destroying in themselves the predisposition to new crystallizations. And so, my boy, after the sacred Raskuano proceeds to these terrestrial three brain of beings, or as they themselves express it, when they die, in the presence of whom are actualized the germs of sacred individuals, their contemporaries usually in order to remember, and also in order to transmit to the beings of subsequent generations all that these sacred individuals had indicated and explained, according to their attainments of responsible age, collected all into one whole, and all this collected into one whole usually just serves as the beginning of all kinds of religious teachings there. The strangeness of the psyche of your favorites in respect of the religious teachings which arise in this way among them manifests itself in this that they already from the very beginning understand literally all that has been said and explained by these genuine sacred individuals actualized from above, and they never take into account in which environment and for which case this or that was said and explained. And further, already during their transmission from generation to generation of these religious teachings, the sense of which had already from the very beginning been distorted, they begin to adopt in regard to them the following two factors, which had already become fixed in the general existence of these strange three brain beings. The first of these consists in this, that those beings who in the giving period of the flow of time belong to the caste called the ruling class, immediately hook on to this religious teaching just that for them, most maleficent question, which exists on this ill star planet under the name of religion for the state or the state for religion. And corresponding to this, they gradually begin with every kind of artfulness to juggle with the previously fixed facts for the justification of their own egoistic aims. And the second consists in this, that certain ordinary beings there, owing to the fault of their producers, acquired in their common presences, during their arising, as well as during their formation into responsible beings, the inherency of what is called psychopathy, and parasitism, in consequence of which they do not have and cannot have in themselves any data at all for the manifestation of any being duty whatever it might be, and become, as it were, authorities 
for all the trifling details of the new religious teachings which have already arisen in the mentioned way, and begin, as it is said, to peck like crows at a jackal's carrot. That totality, already packed from the very beginning without this, of what had been spoken and indicated by the genuine, sacred individuals intentionally actualized from above. Speaking briefly, the results of the mentioned two factors among the three brainer beings of this strange planet, which had been fixed in the process of ordinary existence, and, namely, the inherency in the beings belonging to the caste of the ruling class, and the psychopathy of certain of their ordinary beings, is that they always get divided on questions of religion. Soon after its foundation, on whatever religious doctrines these religions may have been built up, into their famous sects, and these sects in their turn get divided into other sects, and thanks to this, just the same occurs there in all epochs on this comparatively not large planet in the sense of religions. As with the large number of the spoken languages there, referring to which our highly esteemed Mullah Nasser Adin called it a thousand-tongued hydra. And in the present case, he would say, varied, tutelating, tutelations. During my observations on the process of the existence of these peculiar three brain of beings, they had been many times actualized from above, in the common presences of certain of them, the germs of these sacred individuals, and almost on each occasion, with the exception only of the most, most sacred Ashiata Shimash, and all connected with him, which flowed from his own most great labours. After their completed formation and their fulfilment of the mission imposed on them from above, when the process of the sacred Raskuana was completed with them, such religious teachings always began in the mentioned way to arise among these peculiar beings there, which is, they at first, as I said, collecting into one whole all that was indicated and explained in detail by these sacred individuals intentionally actualized from above. For the purpose of remembering it all themselves and also for the purpose of transmission to subsequent generations, yet, of course, into one whole which they collected from the very beginning, as it is said there, from bits here and there, and later, as all of this which was collected together fell into the hands of just those two mentioned types there, well, just then they began, as I already expressed it, to peck at all this, and further dividing themselves up into their famous what are called sects, already composed new fantastic religious teachings thought out by themselves, as a result of which there always obtains on this planet of yours, firstly, a large number of religions as numerous as the colours in the rainbow, and secondly, as it is said, the same old story. During recent centuries, your favourites had many hundreds of these peculiar independent religious teachings in the common planetary process of their being existence. And the basis for all of them was the totality of the indi indications and explanations which has still survived and which had arisen in the mentioned way, given to them by the sacred individuals intentionally actualized among them from above. On these survived totalities, by which, during recent times, they were in the strange manner inspired, and from which, with their bobtail reason, 
They borrowed ideas for the inventions of their still newer and newer religious teachings. There were based five religions which still exist today, namely, those religions called one, the Buddhistic, two, the Hebrew, three, the Christian, four, the Mohammedan, five, the Lamist. Concerning the first of them, and namely, the Buddhistic religion, I have already once told you. The second, namely the Hebrew, is founded, as it were, precisely on the teaching of the Saint Moses, by which name one of the genuine, sacred individuals was called, who in his turn was intentionally actualized from above. The actualization of this sacred individual proceeded there on the planetary of a boy who arose in the country now called Egypt, a little after my fourth personal sojourn on the surface of this planet of yours. This sacred individual, whom your favorites at the present time call Saint Moses, accomplished a great deal for them and left them many of those exact and corresponding indications for ordinary existence, so that if they would adopt and actualize them normally, then indeed all the consequences of the properties of the absolutely maleficent for them organ, Kunda Buffer, might become gradually decrystallized, and even the predisposition for new crystallizations might be destroyed. But, to the common misfortune of all beings, with just a little reason, of all our great universe, they began gradually to mix into all the counsel and indications of this normality-loving Saint Moses, as it was already proper to them to do, such a mass of what are called spices, that the saintly author himself could not with all his wish recognize anything of his own in this, as it were, totality collected by them of all he had explained and indicated. Your favourites of already the first generation of the contemporaries of Saint Moses evidently found it profitable for their special aims to insert in these religious teachings almost the entire fantastic teaching which I already told you when I related that among the ancient three-brained beings of the second grouping on the continent Asia, or contemporary Asia, there was a king named Canusion, a subsequent saint, who, for the purpose of saving his subjects from the pernicious habit of chewing the seed of the poppy, first invented this fantastic religious doctrine. After St. Moses, that sacred individual was actualized there, who laid the beginnings of that religion, which your contemporary favorites call Christianity. This sacred individual, called by your favorites Jesus Christ, was actualized in the planetary body of a boy of that race of terrestrial three brain of beings whom Saint Moses, on the command from above, choose from among the beings of the country Egypt and led to what is called the land of Canaan. After this Jesus, they were actualized, also on the continent Asia, two other sacred individuals on whose teachings the beings there founded two of the enumerated religions existing there until today. And, namely, one of these two sacred individuals was Saint Muhammad, who appeared among the, as they are called, Arabs, and the other, Saint Lama, appeared among the beings dwelling in the country named Tibet. At the present time, the first of the five religious teachings I mentioned, and namely, the Buddhistic, 
is spread chiefly among the beings dwelling in the country India, the former Shamchania, and in the countries called China and Japan. The followers of the second religious teaching, and namely the Hebrew, are now scattered over the whole planet. In this place of my tales, it will do no harm also to remark the course itself, owing to which the followers of the teaching of this Moses are scattered over the whole planet. As, from this explanation, you will well understand about one peculiar property of the organ Kunda buffer, and namely, about the property which evokes the feeling called envy. And you will also understand in what way each property of this organ, however small it may be, may be the cause of very great consequences. The point is that the beings who chiefly professed the teaching of this Moses then very well organized themselves in their community and therefore in the psyche of the beings of all other communities of that period. This same property called envy began to be crystallized in relation to the beings of this community. And so strongly was this property crystallized in them that even after the flow of many of their centuries when the Hebrew community already ceased to be organized and powerful and this former powerful community came to an end as occurs there according to law to all powerful communities there not only was this relation towards the beings of the descendants of this community on the part of the beings of other communities not destroyed but even in the majority of them the feeling of envy towards them has already become organic the third religion founded on the teachings of jesus christ very soon became in its primordial form so widely spread that almost one-third of all the three center beings of this planet were its followers. But thereafter, they began, began gradually to strip also this religious teaching based on resplendent love and transformed it into something also resplendent but already as our dear Mullah Nasser Eden says, into a resplendent Terasa Kubura from the fairy tale Kasuaji. In the case of this great religious teaching, indeed, it also happened among them that his followers divided themselves on account of exterior details of small importance into various sects and came to be called not just Christians as all the first followers of this teaching called it themselves but orthodox, serodox, silodox, hemulodox and various other cognomens also ending in dox and into this teaching of truth and verity they began also to mix for various egoistic and political reasons fragments taken from other religious teachings already existing there, but fragments such as had not only nothing in common with the teachings of Jesus, but which sometimes even flatly contradicted the truths this divine teacher taught. They mixed in it a great deal from the teaching of St. Moses, which by that time had already been thoroughly distorted, and much later, namely, during the period which contemporary beings there call the Middle Ages, the so-called elders of the Church inserted into this Christian religion nearly the whole of that fantastic doctrine invented by those learned beings in the city of Babylon who belong to the school of the dualists, about which I have already told you. The elders of the church in the Middle Ages probably inserted this last doctrine for the convenience of their own shops 
and for the shops of their assistants, because of the famous paradise and hell contained in it. And therefore, at the present time, in place of the teaching of the divine teacher Jesus Christ, in which, among other things, was revealed the power of the all-lovingness and all-forgivingness of our Creator, suffering for beings. It is now already taught there that our Creator mocks the souls of those who follow this teaching. Dear and kind grandfather of mine, please explain to me what is meant by elders of the church? asked Hassan. They call elders of the church there, those beings who become professional dignitaries of the highest rank of any religious teaching. Having met re Malid replied laconically, Bezabab continued further. By the way, I may tell you here that among a rather small group of terrestrial beings, the teaching of Jesus Christ was preserved unchanged and, passing from generation to generation, has even reached the present time in its original form. This smallish group of terrestrial beings is designated the Brotherhood of the Essence. The beings of this brotherhood succeeded at first in introducing the teaching of this divine teacher into their own being existence, and subsequently in transmitting it from generation to generation to later generations as a very good means for freeing themselves from the consequences of the properties of the organ Gunda Buffa. Now, as regards the fourth great religion existing there now, which arose several centuries after the Christian religion and was founded on the teaching of the Fool of Hope Saint Muhammad, this religion was at first spread there widely, and it might perhaps have become eventually a hearth of hope and reconciliations for them all if these strange beings had not stirred this also into a hodgepodge. On the other hand, its followers also mixed into it something from the fantastic theory of the Babylonian duelists. But, on the other hand, the elders of the church of this religion, called in this case Sheikhs Islamists, themselves invented and added to it many things about the blessings of the notorious paradise, which, as it were, existed in the other world, such blessing as perhaps could never even have entered the head of the chief governor of purgatory, his all-quarters maintainer, the archer of Hagumantios, even if he were deliberately to try to imagine them. Although the followers of this religion also, from the very first, split into many different groups and subgroups, which, by the way, continue there even up till now. Nevertheless, they all subscribe to one or another of its two independent, as they are called, schools, which were formed at the very beginning of its arising. These two schools of the Mohammedan religion are called there the Sunnite and the Shiite. It is very interesting to note that the psychic hatred of each other formed in the psyche of the beings who belong to these two independent schools of one and the same religion has, on account of their frequent clashes, now being transformed completely into an organic hate. Beings of certain European communities have during recent centuries greatly contributed by their incitement to the rise of this peculiar transformation of that strange being function. And they have employed and continue to employ this incitement in order that the 
animosity between the beings who follow these two independent schools of one and the same religion should increase and that they should never unite since if this were to happen there might soon be an end there for those European communities. The point is that Nearly half of the ordinary three brain beings there are followers of this Mohammedan teaching. And only as long as this mutual hatred exists among them will they mean nothing terrifying in the sense of reciprocal destruction to European communities. And hence it is that accidentally arisen newly baked communities always rub their hands and rejoice when sparks fly between these Sunnites and Shiites, because they then count on a long and secure existence for themselves. Now, as regards the fifth teaching, namely, the teaching of Saint Lama, also a genuine messenger from our endlessness, the teaching of this sacred individual was spread among those three brainer beings there, who, on account of the geographical conditions, Scully ever happened to come into contact with other beings of this ill star planet, and in consequence have Scully been affected by the abnormally established conditions of ordinary being existing there. One part of this teaching also is followers also soon changed and destroyed, but its other part already more or less entered into the existence of this little group of beings and began to produce the expected results, thanks to which the hope grew even among the highest sacred individuals that this teaching, created by the saintly labours of Saint Lama, might sometime actualize what had already become a necessity in the mega low cosmos for everything that exists. But your favorites did not allow even this to happen, but by their military expeditions or Anglo-Tibetan war, without so much as a thought, knocked these possibilities soundly on the head. About this military expedition I will tell you a little later and I shall tell you about it chiefly because I myself happened to by chance to be an eyewitness of all those lamentable events there. I must first tell you how there on your planet it is now desired, of course with the help of the swivel-eyed general, finally to dispatch even the remnants of those two named religions still existing there, which although they are already changed even beyond recognition, yet nevertheless have during the last centuries made the ordinary existence of the three brain beings there, though very remotely yet all the same a tiny bit, like the ordinary existence of the three brain beings breeding on the other corresponding planets of our great universe. And for certain of them, their phenomenally half hazard existence somewhat tolerable objectively. Namely, I shall here tell you how there is just now proceeding the process of the final dispatch of two of the great religions of the five mentioned, now existing, which were founded, though from bits here and there, nevertheless, on the teachings of genuine messengers of our endlessness himself, one, on the teaching of Saint Jesus, and the other, on the teaching of Saint Mohammed. I repeat that both these great religions there were founded from bits taken here and there, from the teachings of two genuine messengers of his endlessness, and though the three brain beings there of former centuries stripped both these teachings much as the Russian cider stripped his goats, yet nevertheless some even down to the present time believed in something and hoped for something owing to these teachings.
and thereby made their desolate existence a little more bearable. But these contemporary and now arch strange three brainy beings there have taken upon themselves to sweep this also entirely from off the face of their planet. Although the process of the strangeness of their peculiar psyche, namely, the process of the final destruction of these two great religions, began after my departure from their solar system, yet, thanks to the contents of an ethogram about the beings of that strange planet, which I received just before our fly from the planet Caratas, I understand how things were and can now already say with complete conviction that they will no longer stop at string tripping them, but without further ado, entirely destroy even their very traces. In the said ethogram, by the way, it was conveyed to me that there on your planet, first of all in the city of Jerusalem, a university specially for Jewish youths was being opened and secondly, that in the community Turkey, an order was promulgated closing all what are called dervish monasteries, and prohibiting men from wearing the fez and women the yashma. The first half of the message, namely, that a university for Jewish youth was opening in the city of Jerusalem, made it clear to me that this Christian religion also had already come to an end. But to understand this, ye must first know that not so long ago, all the communities existing there on the continent Europe, the beings of which are for the most part followers of this religion, together produced, on account of this same city Jerusalem, their great wars against those beings, followers of other religions, and these great wars of theirs they called Crusades. They produced these wars or Crusades only in order that this city of Jerusalem, in which this divine teacher Jesus Christ had existed, suffered and died, should become exclusively Christian. And during these crusades of theirs, nearly half the beings of the male sex of that continent were completely destroyed. And now in this same city of Jerusalem, they have opened their contemporary university for Jewish youths, and almost certainly, to, with the common consent of all those same European Christian communities, Just that nationality is called Jewish in which the divine Jesus appeared and existed, and the beings of which tortured and crucified him on a cross. Although the present generation of Jews are not direct enemies of Jesus Christ, yet they each also now have the conviction that this Jesus, who appeared among their ancestors, and came to be regarded as a sacred personality by all the followers of the Christian religion, was, quite simply, a fervent and sick visionary. Among contemporary beings of the planet Earth, a university is just that hearth on which everything acquired during decades and centuries by preceding beings is burnt, and upon this hearth, one and a half day tasty lentil soup is quickly cooked to take the place of everything attained by the centuried, conscious and unconscious efforts and labours of their unfortunate ancestors. This is quite enough to show me, and to convince me with my whole being, what will eventually become of this Jerusalem now that they have opened there their own famous university, and moreover, for Jewish youths. I already see in my mind's eye that before many of their years have passed, 
there will be on the spot where the planetary body of the divine Jesus was buried, a place for parking contemporary cars, that is, a parking place for those machines which for contemporary beings were just a marvel needed to drive them crazy. Furthermore, not only have these sacrilegious beings gradually distorted for their egoistic and political aims the teachings of this divine teacher, but they have now begun to destroy even the memory of it. But there, that also has long been in the style of your favorites. In this connection, I may say that the whole of what is called contemporary civilization there tends only to increase the speed of this machine invented by them and maleficent just for themselves. And indeed, in the last ethogram I received about the three brainy beings of that use fated planet, I was informed, among other things, that a record speed of this machine had already been established there of 320 miles an hour. Of course, such a record will only lead to this, that the already sufficiently trifling size of the ill-fated planet will become, in their bobtail being picturings of reality, completely trifling. Well, the Lord Creator be with them, my boy. Whatever speed they may attain with this machine of theirs all the same, if they remain as they are, not only they themselves, but even their thought will never go any further than their atmosphere. Now, as regards the second great religion which was founded, as I have already told you, upon bits here and bits there, from the teaching of the fool of hope, saying Muhammad. This religion, from the very beginning of its arising, began to be particularly applied and used for their egoistic and political aims by beings there with Hasnamusian properties, and hence it is the most stripped of all. The power-possessing beings of certain communities there gradually mixed into this divine teaching for their said Hasnamusian aim such spices of their own invention that a Shirakurian combination resulted, the secret of which would be the envy of all the contemporary famous European as they are called pastry cooks and chefs. And so... Judging by the latter half of the contents of this ethogram, the process of the entire destruction of this second great religions is bound to proceed, or had already proceeded there, on account of that order mentioned in the ethogram promulgated by the power-possessing beings of the community Turkey. The point is that this same community of Turkey is one of the largest of all the communities there whose beings profess this religion. I must first tell you that from the beginning of the rise of this Mohammedan religion, certain beings of this same community took in the teaching of this religion in its primary form very well and began gradually to incorporate it into their daily existence. And therefore, Although the teaching of this religion was gradually changed under the influence of the power-possessing beings there, nevertheless, among these same certain beings there, this teaching of Muhammad passed from generation to generation in an unchanged form. Until now, therefore, there has at least been a faint hope that if sometime these strange beings should suddenly settle down, this teaching would infallibly regenerate and actualize those aims for which it was created by the full of hope, Saint Muhammad. So, my boy, these same certain beings there were called dervishes, 
and it was concerning the closing of just their monasteries that the order was indeed given in that contemporary community Turkey. Of course, by the destruction in Turkey of this dervishum, dervishum, those last dying sparks will also be entirely extinguished there, which preserved, as it were, in the ashes my sometime rekindle the hearth of those possibilities upon which St. Mohammed counted and for which he had hoped. And as regards the other order communicated to me in that ethogram and promulgated in that same country, Turkey, namely, the prohibition upon beings of the male sex to wear the formerly famous fez and upon the beings of the female sex, the yashma. The consequences of these innovations are very clearly depicted in my being picturings about the future. Thanks to these innovations, there is no doubt, but that exactly the same will be repeated with the beings of this Turkey as occurred to the beings of the large community Russia after they had also begun to imitate everything European. It may be noted, for example, that indeed, in all the beings of that large community Russia, only one or two centuries ago when, before they had yet begun to imitate everything European, these two being functions still obtained, which are called Matadalik and Namuslik, or, as these being feelings are still called, the feeling of religiousness and the feeling of patriarchality. And it was just those same being feelings which a couple of centuries ago made the beings of that large community famous among other beings of the whole of this planet in respect of their morality and the patriarchality of their family foundations. But when afterwards they began imitating everything European, both these being feelings still remaining in them began gradually to atrophy in them. And now at the present time, almost all the beings of that community have become, in the sense of religiousness, and patriarchality such, the notion of which our wise teacher Mullah Nasser Adan expresses by the mere exclamation, Ah, get along with you. In Russia, moreover, none of this began with the yashmak or the fairs. No, these hairdressers were not worn there. But it was begun there with the beard of the beings of the male sex, for the three-brained beings of the male sex there, the beard is the same as our tail is for us, which, as you already know, adds to the beings of male sex among us, masculinity and activity. It is now the turn of these unfortunate Turks once they have proposed to change their faces for European bowlers, the rest will follow of itself. Of course, the psyche of these Turkish beings will also soon degenerate, as it degenerated in the beings of the community of Russia. The difference between the Russian beings and the Turk is only in this, that for the Russians one being only namely their Tsar, was the cause for this transformation of their psyche. Whereas for the beings of the community Turkey, several beings were its cause. And there were several because these Turks recently changed their old many century established state organization for a new one, a certain special republican form and in place of one ruler, as had obtained among them during their former state organization, there were several. If even this former state organization of theirs was bad, yet 
To counterbalance this, there was a single ruler who introduced innovations solely for his community, and furthermore, all of them all patriarchal. And now in this community Turkey, of the chief leaders there are several, and each of them is a wise acre who forces upon the unfortunate ordinary beings of the whole of this community his callousness, not responding at all either, either to the already long ago crystalline needs of the psyche of the beings of this community, or to their established pillars of their being morality. It is very interesting to notice further that just as formerly the Russian Tsar was supplied by his nearest all patriarchal functionaries with a great quantity of what is called money, obtained by the sweat of the peasants, and was sent to the continent of Europe to study in the various communities there a great number of methods of government, in order that when he returned he might be the better orientate himself in the ruling of his community. So likewise, these present Kala Turkish rulers were also provided by their own patriarchal fathers with much money, this time, however, obtained by the sweat of the Kaivan Sanasaks, and also sent to the continent Europe to receive there what they call a good education for the future welfare of their fatherland. And so, my boy, in both of these cases, because their future rulers of the two large, many million communities went to the continent of Europe quite young, and had not yet at all become aware of their responsibility, but chiefly thanks to this that they were provided with money from the set source, the existence of the beings there on the continent of Europe was absorbed and permanently crystallized in them as so splendiferous and ben beneficial that afterwards, on account of the abnormally established conditions of existence in their country, they became leaders of these many million communities. They, like the Russians are, could not help aiming to make the existence of their compatriots to their bobtail notions happy as well. Much good, by the way, the present chief rulers of this community Turkey saw and absorbed in the community Germany to which they were sent for the purpose of studying what is called militarism, that is, the special finances for directing the processes of reciprocal destruction. That is why these present chief rulers of the community of Turkey existed a long time in that community Germany and were for a considerable time there what are called junkers. Especially much good indeed they saw and absorbed in that Germany in its capital Berlin on the street called Under den Linden. I do not yet know what future benefactions these new Turkish rulers will create for their compatriots, but meanwhile, they have already done their fatherland one very, very good patriotic deed. Thoroughly to understand the essence of this patriotic deed, you must first know that in the capital of this community Turkey, in the streets and alleys of those quarters called Galata and Pera, all the female beings of a special designation used to belong to foreign communities, though these same women earned and spent genuine Turkish lear. But thanks to the recent renovations, they have now come to the full and certain hope that very soon these genuine patriotic Turkish lira of theirs will no longer be at the disposal or use of the female beings of any foreign community alien to them, but will be used only by their own dear she compatriots. 
It is not for nothing that how highly esteem Hachi Nelson Eden says. What is most important is to have plenty of money, and then even our numbers may creak. Or sometimes, in such cases, he also says in Turkish itself, which say in English means, "World deeds are like honey cake." From which the eater must grow and adds to. Now, let us talk about what I promised to tell you a little more in detail, namely, about the teachings of the last sacred individual who appeared among the beings of Tibet, Saint Lama, and about the causes of the complete destruction of that teaching also. The teaching and preaching of this saint were not so widely spread there, because of the geographical conditions of that locality where he appeared, and where he taught those unfortunate three centered beings also what they must do to free themselves from the consequences of the properties of the organ Kunda Buffa. On account of his geographical conditions. Beings of this country were little in touch, as I have already told you, with the abnormal conditions of ordinary being existence of the beings of other communities, and in consequence, certain of them were more re receptive of the teaching of this large sacred individual, and this teaching therefore just entered into their essence and began gradually to be actualized already in practice also. So, my boy, during many years, their circumstances gradually so arranged themselves in that country called Tibet, that the local beings became grouped according to the degree of their inner transubstantiation of the teaching of this Saint Lama, and according to the degree of their need to work upon themselves, and having correspondingly organized their ordinary existence, they, thanks to their isolated environment. Due to this inaccessible ability of their country for beings of other communities, had the possibility of working without hindrance according to the instructions of Saint Lama, upon their liberation from the consequences of the properties of that organ which their first, earliest ancestors, to their common misfortune, were forced to have. Certain beings among their number had already attained such a deliverance; many others were already on the path of this attainment. While many of them were hopeful of one day also reaching the way of this achievement, but just when the conditions and environment for productive work in this direction had at last taken a definite turn in the right direction. In this Tibet, well, it was just then that that happened, thanks to which the possibility for the beings of this country, also of one day freeing themselves from the misfortune oppressing them, had to perish completely, or at any rate, be again delayed, delayed for many years. But before telling you about just what happened there, you must do know the following. Only a few centuries ago, the chief particularity of the three brainer beings who please you, namely, the process of their periodic reciprocal destruction, used to proceed there on your planet between beings of different communities of one and the same continent, namely. The continent on which they bred, and if occasionally, by exception, this process arose between beings of different continents, then it occurred only between beings dwelling on the neighboring borders of two adjacent continents, and this was because locomotion by water was still very difficult for terrestrial beings some centuries ago. 
But after a contemporary being there had by chance discovered the possibility of using the power of artificially rarefied water for such locomotion, or as they say, the power of steam, and had devised suitable vessels for that purpose, these terrestrial beings thereafter just began going for such processes to other border borderlands of the neighbouring continents, or even to other continents. During the last century, one of these favourite places on another continent for the beings of this peculiar planet was the country of ancient Jemchania, or as contemporary beings say there, India. Do you remember that I once told you that to that self-same Chemchania of the continent Asia, now Asia, beings of the continent Atlantis used to sail in the beginning for pearls, and how later that it was also they who first populated that country? So, my boy, this same unfortunate former Chemchania, now India, has become during recent centuries the favourite place also of the contemporary beings of the continent Europe, but this time for their processes of reciprocal destruction. They began to sail there and there to produce their processes of reciprocal destruction both among themselves and with the beings breeding there, that is to say, Either beings of one European community strove to destroy the existence of the beings belonging to another, also European community, or similar processes proceeded between local beings with the European beings helping one side or the other side. The processes of reciprocal destruction of local character there in that unfortunate Chemchania were very frequent especially during the last 18 or 15 centuries. And this was so, firstly because, in consequence of a similar great process, the beings there, who had earlier belonged to only two different communities, split into a great number of independent small communities. And secondly, because there also then occurred such a combination in the general psyche of beings of that locality, that the fits of this property, and namely, the striving for reciprocal destruction occurred in the beings of that part of the surface of the planet Earth, everywhere not simultaneously, but at different times. And this further new com combination of their general psyche occurred also thanks to a slight unforeseen misunderstanding connected with the common harmonic movement of the whole of that solar system. I will sometime explain to you also about the details of that misunderstanding. And meanwhile, let us return to our tale we have begun. And thus... That part of the surface of the planet Earth occupied by India was has remained, in respect of natural wealth, the same in recent centuries as formerly. And therefore, when in their peculiar psyche of the European beings who had gone to that country for the process of reciprocal destruction, the need to carry on this terror had passed, those beings stayed on there, and either prepared themselves for subsequent similar processes, or, as they say, earned enough to send the required goods for the ordinary existence of their families who had remained on the continent Europe. And all kinds of goods they earned there by means of their trades, consisting for the most part of manufacturing what are called copper buttons, hand mirror, beads, earrings, bracelets, and various other such gugots which for which it appear the beings of that country also had a weakness. Quite from the beginning of this period, 
the beings of the continent Europe began in various ways to take from the local beings there in Chemchania their lands also, on which they began to exist, just as on the continent Europe, in separate groups according to the community from which they had emigrated. These beings from different communities of Europe continue also to manifest there toward each other, the kind of strange being relationships which beings of one European community manifested then and still continue to manifest towards beings belonging to other communities of the same continent. Namely, thanks also to the consequences of the properties of the organ Kunda buffer, they cultivate feelings which have been crystallized in them into the forms of particular functions existing there under the names of envy, jealousy, sandor, which is wishing the death or weakness of others, and so on. And there in Chemchania too, Beings of one community began to pipe with full blast against beings of another community that has Namusian music they call policy. That is, they began to criticize each other, to lower each other's standing, to down each other, and so on. Their aim being to create what is called a prestige among the local beings in relation to their own community. In the course of such a policy, one of the heads of a certain European community in some way or other learned the secret how to influence the psyche of beings of other communities to acknowledge the authority of and give supremacy to the beings of his own community. Afterwards, when the beings who had learned this secret, the principle of the action of which was called the Vesnel, or inciting one against the other, initiated the other heads of his community into it, and they all made it the basis of their policy. Then, indeed, the beings of this community began everywhere and in everything to obtain predominance. Although both the former heads of the beings of this community and also that being himself who had hit upon the secret Gavasnel already long ago perished, yet subsequent generations, continuing now of course automatically to employ this secret, gradually not only took into their own hands almost the whole of this Chemchania, but also subordinated to their influence the very essence of all the beings breeding on that part of the planet Earth. In spite of the fact that two centuries had passed, yet at that period to which my further tale refers concerning the destruction by contemporary beings of the labors of Saint Lama, it all continued in the same way. Having become proud of their success, the recent heads of that mentioned European community who had the luck, thanks to this same secret, Levasnel alone, gradually to subordinate all to their influence and to grasp everything into their hands, which to lay their paws, even on that which had until then been considered unattainable. Namely, they decided to take possession of also that neighboring country called Tibet, which was then considered to be inaccessible, and therefore one day, for them fine, but for all the rest of the beings of that planet, sorry day. They assembled many beings of their community, and still more from among the number of small local communities already conquered by them, and with the help of every possible new invention of their contemporary European civilization, for the process of reciprocal destruction. 
they began very quietly to move towards this country Hithrow considered inaccessible. In spite of the help of these European new inventions of every kind, this movement of theirs up country was very difficult and cost them very dearly, not only in what they call their pounds, but also in what they call casualties. While this crowd of every possible kind of terrestrial three brain of being still quietly, but against great difficulties moved up, the beings themselves who dwelt above in Tibet as yet suspected nothing whatever of what these Europeans being called their military expedition against their country. And they learned about it only when that mob was already up. When the beings of this high country learned of this unusual event, they immediately became alarmed and agitated because they had grown accustomed to the notion during many centuries that the place of their existence was inaccessible to everybody and that beings of other communities, no matter what might be their means for the process of reciprocal destruction, would be unable to penetrate to them in any way. So certain were they of this that they had not even once cast a glance downwards to see what was being done during this time in respect of the aim of penetrating into their an inaccessible country. And hence, they did t not take any corresponding measures in advance. It was from this that the sorrowful events subsequently came, which were finally to destroy all the results created by that full of faith, sacred individual, Saint Lama. First of all, it is necessary to tell you that this high country was a place of existence also of that small group consisting of seven beings there, who, according to the rule established from the very beginning, were guardians of the most secret instructions and last counsels of Saint Lama. This group consisted of these seven beings who, following the indications of Saint Lama, for freeing themselves from the consequences of the properties of the organ Kunda buffer, had brought their self-perfecting up to the final degree. When this group of beings of seven learned of this event, it dispatched the chief among them to join the agitated chiefs of the whole country in a conference which took place in the capital just one day on the day of the arrival of these uninvited guests from below. The assembled heads of the Tibetan beings unanimously decided at this first conference of theirs very peacefully and courteously to request these uninvited visitors to return whole and hearty to from where they had come and to live in peace both themselves and their peaceful country that did no harm to anybody. When, after several days, it became clear that these uninvited guests would not consent to return, but, as a consequence of this request, even hastened to move forward more deeply into the country. The members of the first council became even more alarmed, arranged a second council, and began to deliberate what to do to prevent these beings from entering, as it is said, a stranger's house without invitation. A quantity of every sort of means were proposed for the removing from their country these beings who had broken, like ravens, into a stranger's nest but one in particular found support, to destroy utterly to the last man all these uninvited swaggerers. And this, my boy, could have indeed been easily done, because such is the country that without any additional means, merely by stones thrown down from the mountains, a single being could destroy thousands of enemy passing 
along the valleys. And especially was this possible because every one of them knew the lie of his native country like the palm of his hand. By the close of the conference, all the heads of the country Tibet had become so excited that they would almost certainly have decided to carry out the proposal supported by the majority. If the head of that small group of seven, who, as I have already told you, had been sent to this council by the other members, had not intervened in this stormy council. This head of seven, later a saint, while persuading the other participants in this conference that what they had proposed must not be done, said, among other things, The existence of every being is equally precious and dear to our common Creator God. Therefore, the destruction of these beings, so great a number of them too, would give no small grief to that one who, even without this, is overburdened with the care and sorrow of all that exists among us on earth. All that this future saying then said in the assembly of Tibetan chiefs was so generally persuasive that they decided not only to take no measures against the strangers, but even to take every kind of precaution that no one should hinder the march of current events. Thereupon, the beings appearing from below as uninvited guests, meeting with no opposition anywhere, moved forward there into the heart of that unique country, which hitherto had been isolated from all the conditions of ordinary being existence growing always worse on your planet. Well then, there just proceeded that which resulted in a great calamity, not only for all present and future beings of this unlucky country, but perhaps even for all, in general, present and future three-brainer beings of the whole of that unfortunate planet. The point is that at the final conference of the heads of the whole of Tibet, a resolution was carried, by the way, that certain members of the council, chosen by lot, should go to those districts through which these foreign beings would pass, in order to warn and advance the local population of the considered decision of their leaders, and persuade them to permit nobody, under any circumstances, to hinder the passing of these foreigners. Among the number of those sent to the districts through which the foreign armed beings would pass, the choice fell upon the chief also of this small group of seven. And when this future saint arrived for the purpose mentioned at one large point, near which the armed corral of foreign beings had camped for a needed rest, a stray bullet fired intentionally or accidentally, in the street of this large point by one of these newcomers from below. Killed on the spot this future saint. In this way ended the existence of the chief of the small group of nearly perfected brothers, and overcome by the terror of such an event, nothing more remained for them but only to take all the necessary steps to bring home the planetary body of their former chief. In order that you may clearly represent to yourself the real terror of the situation experienced by these six brothers who were left without their chief, and also well understand all the resulting calamitous consequences, I must first of all explain to you, even though briefly, the history of the rise and existence in this country named Tibet, of this small group, 
which had always consisted of seven three-brained beings of your planet. This group was formed and existed long before the appearance on the planet Earth of the last sacred individual, Saint Lama. From very early times, it was composed of seven beings, directly initiated by Saint Krishna Khanna, also a messenger of our endlessness, specially sent to the three center beings of the planet Earth, breeding in the country Chamchania. When Saint Buddha afterwards appeared there in Chamchania and made clear that many instructions of Saint Krishnakana were not yet obsolete for the psyche of the beings of that same country, and that these instructions, when absorbed by any of the beings there, contribute to the destruction of those consequences of the properties of the organ Kundabhafa, to help them in freeing themselves from which he had himself also been sent to them. And when he decided to put these instructions of saying Krishna Kana as a whole into the basis of his own teaching also, then these seven beings there, initiated directly by Saint Krishna Kana, after Buddha had taught them the aim and necessity of their existence, and they had clearly sensed this and were convinced that the instructions of Saint Buddha, not only at heart, did not contradict the instructions of Saint Krishna Kana, but even corresponded more perfectly to the psyche of the beings of that given period, became followers of Saint Buddha. And still later, when Saint Lama appeared specially for the beings of the country Tibet, and he also in his turn found that many instructions of Saint Buddha would still correspond very well with the psyche of the beings of that country. If only certain changes of detail were admitted into them, corresponding to the change in the external conditions of existence which had been brought about under the influence of time. He therefore also put into the basis of his teaching many instructions from the verities pointed out already by Saint Krishna Kana before him and renewed by Saint Buddha. Then this small group of initiated beings as well as other groups already followers of Buddha, having also clearly sensed that the additions and changes brought to his teaching by Saint Lama corresponded better to the contemporary psyche and became followers of Saint Lama. Among the beings of this small group there existed a rule, which, by the way, they kept very strictly, in accordance with which certain secret instructions of Saint Lama concerning the beings of their group were transmitted from generation to generation through their chief alone. And he could initiate into these secrets the other six only after a certain attainments on their part. That is just why all the six members of this small organization, all of whom had already merited and were ready to be accepted for initiation into the near future, were so horrified, as I have said, when they learned about the destruction of their chief. With the destruction of this at that time, so initiates, there was lost to them forever the possibility of becoming initiated into these secret instructions of Saint Lama. Owing to the fact that the destruction of their chief proceeded so unexpectedly, that so remaining possibility became even doubtful for them of receiving these instructions by communicating with the reason of the destroyed chief by means of the process, the sacred Am Nojinu, for the existence of which they not only knew the possibilities, but they also had in themselves 
all the data required for such an actualization. You, probably, my dear boy, Know nothing yet about this sacred process? That process is called the sacred Am no Shinu, by means of which three center beings who have themselves already had time to quote and to bring their own body kashan up to completed functioning and to a de definite degree of reason, intentionally produce the quoting or as it is otherwise said, the materialization of the body kashan of any being already entirely destroyed to such a density that this body acquires again for a certain time the possibility of manifesting in certain of its function proper to its former planetary body. This sacred process can be produced upon the body kashyan of that being who also during his existence had brought his higher being body up to the completed functioning and in whom, in addition, the reason of this body had been brought up to the degree called the sacred being Marozinsinu. In our great universe, Besides the process of the intentionally quoting of the being body kashan of an already destroyed being, another process exists called the most sacred, Jury Matli. And this most sacred process consists in this, that when there is intentionally first produced a quoting of the highest being body, namely, the body of the soul, only afterwards, as in the first case, is the sacred Am no Shino produced. It is possible, of course, to produce both these processes only in that case, if such higher being bodies are still in the, those spheres contactable by the sphere of that planet on which these sacred sacraments are produced. And in addition, these formations evoked intentionally and consciously by definite beings can exist and maintain connection and communication with them only as long as the beings who produce these formations consciously feed the body kashyan with their own sacred aisakadlaton. Thus, those six remaining members of the small group of seven might have had recourse to this same sacred process, um, no shinu, for communication with the reason of their destroyed chief if they, having foreseen the possibility of this sudden disease of their chief, had made beforehand, while he still existed, a certain preparation necessary for completing this process. In order that you may understand about the essence of this preparation for the sacred process, the sacrament Am no Shino, it is necessary for you to know about two particular properties of the being hand blood zoin, which is the blood of the being body kashyan. The first of these properties of the being hand blood zoin consists in this, that if any part of it be separated and removed, then wherever and however far it may be taken, a thread-like connection is formed between this part and the fundamental con concentration of all this cosmic substance, in such a way that this connection is formed of this same substance, and its density and thickness increase and diminish 
proportionately with the distance between the fundamental concentration of this substance and its separated part. And the second particular property of this hand black zone consists in this, that when it is introduced into the fundamental concentration of this substance and has mixed with this primordial concentration, it is distributed in it everywhere in uniform densities and in uniform quantities, wherever the given concentration may be and in whatever quantity this same handblad zone may accidentally or in intentionally be introduced. And so, in consequence of the fact that the body kashjan of the being is quoted with those substances which in their totality make this cosmic formation much lighter than that mass of cosmic substances which surrounds the planets and is called the planetary atmosphere. Then as soon as the body kashjan of the being is separated from the planetary body of the being, it at once rises according to the cosmic law called tenik doa, or as it is sometimes called the law of gravity, to that sphere in which it finds the weight proper to it equally balanced, and which is therefore the corresponding place of such cosmic arisings. Then, in consequence of all this, the preliminary preparation consists in this, that beforehand, still during the planetary existence of that being, on the body kashan of whom it is intended, after his decease, to produce the sacrament of the sacred Amnoshino, a particle of his handblad zoin must be taken and this particle must be either kept in some corresponding surplanetary formation or be introduced into those beings themselves who produce this ritual and intentionally blend with the handblad zoin of their own body kashjan. In this way, when the three brain of perfected being for designed for this sacred sacrament, Amnoshinu seizes his planetary existence, and his body Kashan is separated from his planetary body. Then thanks to the first particular property of this being Handblad Zoin, that connection begins to be established about which I have just told you. Between the given body Kashan and that place where the particle of his handblad zone was preserved beforehand, or those beings who intentionally quote this particle in their own bodies, Kashan. In order to be clear about our subsequent talks upon this question, you must now be told just here that the set connection one end of which is kept in the body kashjan, which has risen to its corresponding sphere, and the other end of which stays either within those surplanetary formations in which the particle from the general mass of the handblad zoin of the given body kashjan was fixed, or in those beings who intentionally blended the handblad zoin of the given body kashjan with the handblad zoin of their own body kashjan can exist in space only for a limited period, namely, only until the completion of the appointed movement of that planet on which the given being has arisen around its sun. And at the beginning of such a new completing movement, the said threads completely disappear. And they disappear because, 
in the atmosphere surrounding all planets, the evolution and the involution of cosmic substances required for the great cosmic trogo oto egocrat in accordance with the fundamental sacred cosmic law, Heptapara Prashino, again commenced flowing only for the trogo oto egocrat process of local character, which is within the limits of the given solar systems what is called own activity, and in consequence of which all, without exception, of the cosmic substances which happen to be in the given atmosphere during the period of this movement, and among them the said connections also, are immediately transformed into those cosmic substances which must be present in these atmospheres. So, my boy, until these completed movements have come to an end, those beings existing on planets who either have in themselves a particle of the Hamlet zone of any body cast down, or have at their disposal the surplanetary formation in which that part of the Hamlet zone was fixed, can, assuming of course, that they have all the corresponding data for carrying it out, at any time attract such a body back to the sphere of the solid part of the planet, and saturating it to the condensation corresponding to their own Hamlet zone. In this way, establish relations with the reason of that already completely formed independent cosmic unit. And this attraction, or as it is sometimes said, materialization is produced, as I have already told you, by means of what is called valley cream, that is, by the conscious injection in a certain way of one's own hamlet zone into the ends of these connections. Several times, even before this Tibetan case, this sacred process, our Nojino, had already been produced on your planet by the three centered beings of different periods. And about the information concerning these sacred processes of former times, several legomenisms existed. It was through these legomenisms also that this small group of Tibetan beings already knew all the details of the procedure relating to this sacred process. And of course, they also knew about the need of the special preliminary preparation for it. But having now no other possibility of learning all the secret sacraments, except only by attempting to enter into relations with the reason of their deceased chief, they decided to try to carry out this sacred sacrament upon the body kashan of their former chief, even without the set preliminary preparation. And so, owing to this risk of theirs, that proceeded there which served as the cause of the mentioned great misfortune. As my further investigation showed me, this great misfortune occurred in the following way. When these six great initiates, still existing with their planetary existence, began by twos, in turns, uninterruptedly for three days and three nights, to produce upon the planetary body of their former chief the process, Valikrim, that is, the inpouring of their own hamlet zone into this body. Then, because of the absence of the set preliminary preparation of the connection with his body Kashjan, their handblad zone did not go to the actualization where it should have gone, but only accumulated chaotically over this planetary body of their former chief. And since, 
unfortunately for them. During these same days, a reinforced blending of the sacred active element Okidano was proceeding in the atmosphere above that locality. For as the beings say there, there were great thunderstorms. Then, between these two cosmic results, still only in the process of transition from one definite cosmic phenomenon to another, a what is called Sobrionolian contact resulted. And it was thanks to that contact there, on that small area of that eu star planet, that that accelerated cosmic phenomenon resulted called Nortshutni Tunnel. That is to say, the sudden and instantaneous evolution of all cosmic formed crystallizations, and namely, all the neighboring subplanetary formations were immediately transformed into the prime source substance, Atherocrino. This Sobrinolian contact, or as it would be said on your planet Earth, this explosion, was so powerful that during this Nortjutni tunnel there, everything without any exception was transformed into Atherocrino. Both the planetary body of the chief of this small group of beings, as well as all the six other brethren there, who had completed this sacred sacrament. And likewise, in general, all the spiritualized or only concentrated surplanetary formations which were in the given region within an area of one shmana, or as your favorites would say, one square kilometer. Among these destroyed formations, reproduced both naturally as well as artificially by the beings, there were also all the what are called books, which belong to these seven terrestrial genuine great initiated beings, and other things which had served as means for keeping in memory everything concerning all the three genuine sacred individuals intentionally actualized from above, and, namely, Saint Krishna Khana, Saint Buddha, and Saint Lama. Now, my boy, I think the sense of those words of mine will appear clear to you, by which I define the significance of this charming military expedition. And namely, when I said that this was a great misfortune, not only for the beings of the given country, yet, perhaps, also for all the three brainer beings of the whole of the planet. And so, my boy, it has now become clear to you how there on your planet all the five religions I named still remaining there at the present time, and which were founded on the teachings of five different genuine saints, sent to the three brainer beings from above, for helping them to free themselves from the consequences of the property, properties of the organ kunda buffer. How, although all these five religions have gradually become changed, Thanks, as always, to the same conditions of ordinary being existence abnormally established just by them, until they were eventually turned for any same mentation into children's fairy tales. Yet, nevertheless, these five religions still serve for some of them as a support for these inner moral motives owing to which during certain previous periods their mute natural existence became more or less becoming to three centered beings. But now, 
after the final destruction of even the last remnants of these religions, it is difficult even to foresee how it will all end. The last of these five religions, namely, that founded on the teaching of the genuine messenger, Saint Lama, has been finally, and even with a crash, destroyed by that charming military expedition of theirs. The last but one, namely, that founded on the teachings of Saint Muhammad, they are now destroying it by means the abolition of the former famous Vest and Yashmaks, with the gracious assistance of the German junkers. And as regards the final destruction of the still earlier arisen religion, namely, that founded on the teaching of Jesus Christ, that is, the religion and teaching upon which the highest individuals placed great hopes. The contemporary three-brained beings there, who have already become arch-strange, are completely destroying it by organizing in that city of Jerusalem their university for the contemporary Jewish youth. The religion founded on the teaching of St. Moses, although it existed for a long time, and is still maintained after a fashion by its followers. Yet, owing to the organic hatred formed in the beings of other community towards the beings who follow this religion, due only to that maleficent idea existing there called policy, infallibly, sooner or later, they will doubtlessly croak it as well, and also with a crash. And finally, as regards that religion there which was, so to say, founded on the teaching of Saint Buddha, I have already told you that, thanks to their notorious suffering, based on a misunderstood idea, they have from the very beginning turned this teaching into a means for their own, as they themselves say, mental perversity. By the way, it must be noted that in the beginning the Tanguri and after them Brahmanists, Shunists and so on occupy themselves with this mental perversity there. And now at the present time those called Theosophists and other pseudo-learned, occupy themselves with the same thing. Having thus spoken, Bezaba became silent for a short while, during which it was seen that he concentratedly pondered over something, and afterwards he said, At this moment I am considering that it would be very, very useful for your reason if I tell you more about a certain event connected also with the sacrament of the sacred Amnoshino, um, which concerns that sacred individual, the conception of whom was actualized among your favorites and who, having become formed, was named Jesus Christ. I will tell you about this important event connected with the actualization among them of this sacred individual, the notion about which the contemporary favorites of yours define by the words the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Your acquaintance with this fact will be another example for you for enlightening you about the sense and essential significance of the sacred sacrament, Aum Noshino. And in addition, you will also have a clear example of what I have already told you. How, thanks only to the strange inherency in their general psyche, 
cold, wise acring. The sense of even those crumbs collected from bits here and there into one whole, spoken and indicated to them by the genuine, sacred individuals intentionally actualized among them from above were already so distorted by the first generation of the contemporaries of the given sacred individuals that from all what they call religious teachings information reached the beings of subsequent generations suitable perhaps only for the inventing of what are called children's fairy tales. The point is that when this sacred individual Jesus Christ was actualized in the planetary body of a terrestrial three brain of being, and when afterwards he had to be separated from his exterior planetary coating, then just this same sacred process, Am Noshino, was also produced on his body Kashan by certain terrestrial three brain of beings in order to have the possibility in view of the violent interruption of his planetary existence, of continuing to communicate with his divine reason, and of obtaining in this way the information about certain cosmic truths and certain instructions for the future, which he did not finish giving them. The information concerning this great event was accurately noted by certain participants in the performance of this sacred process and was intentionally related, for a definite purpose, to the ordinary beings around them. And so, my boy, in consequence of the fact that that period of time coincided with that particularly sharp functioning, which I already once mentioned, of the strange reason of these three brain beings pleasing to you, in the sense of the periodic Akbazer Bazia, which had long been an inherent need for them to lead into error beings around them similar to themselves at which period many of them strove to be called learned, of course, of new format, and also on account of the fact that at that time there were many such beings among the mentioned ordinary beings around them. Then they inserted for transmission to subsequent generations in most of the notes and expressions of those stories of the witnesses about this sacred process, such absurdities that in addition to this indubitable information that Jesus Christ was crucified on a cross and that after the crucifixion he was buried, they also pr proved just as convincingly that after his crucifixion and burial, Jesus Christ was resurrected and continued to exist among them and to teach this and that. And only afterwards did he raise himself with his planetary body to heaven. The resolve of this kind of in the objective sense, criminal wise acring of theirs, was that in the beings of subsequent generations, genuine faith in all this divine and uniquely accomplished teaching of salvation of the all-loving Jesus Christ was totally destroyed. These absurdities which were written down began gradually to engender in the presences of certain of the beings of subsequent generations the impulse of doubt, not only concerning what I have just said, but also doubt relating in general 
to all the real information and accurate instructions and explanations of this sacred individual, intentionally actualized among them from above. The data, however, for the doubt of these mentioned certain terrestrial three-brainer beings of subsequent generations, began to be crystallized and became an inalienable part of their common presences, chiefly because, even in them in spite of the process, inherent in them, of almost automatic existence. Yet, nevertheless, during a long period of time, many of their centuries, they gradually acquired from this automatic crystallization data for a more or less correct instinctive sensing of certain cosmic truths, as, for instance, concerning the indubitable truth that if the process of the sacred rascal Arno occurs to any being, or, as they say, if someone dies and is moreover buried, then this being will never exist again. Nor, furthermore, will he ever speak or teach again. And so, those of these unfortunates, in whom, in short, there still continue to proceed, very slightly, the functioning of being mentation, according to the law of saying logic, and who had not at all accepted such illogical and unusual in incoherencies, ultimately lost all faith in any truth whatsoever, really given and explained by this sacred individual, Jesus Christ. And as regards the remaining terrestrial three-brainer beings, who, by the way, in general represent in themselves the majority, then they, becoming usually transformed at the corresponding age, owing to many causes, but chiefly because, already from the earliest years of their existence, it became proper to them to occupy themselves with what is called Maud Dorton, into what are called psychopaths except blindly, literally, and word for word, entirely, without any being logical mentation. All these fantastic absurdities which reached them, and a kind of special peculiar faith in all these religious teachings becomes automatically formed in them, as if it represented in itself the totality of all the truths connected with and related to just this sacred individual, Jesus Christ, who was indeed intentionally actualized among them from above. The information about what is called the Lord's Supper, given in the noted totality, still existing today among your contemporary favorites, representing, as it were, the real accurate history of this sacred individual, and which is called by them the Holy Writ, was nothing else but a preparation for the great sacrament Am Noshinu, on the body Kashjan of Saint Jesus Christ, it is interesting to notice that even in this totality noted from bits here and there, which your favorites call the Holy Writ, there are many precise words and even whole phrases uttered at that Lord's Supper by the Saint Jesus Christ himself, as well as by those directly initiated by him who in this same holy script are called disciples or apostles, and which words and phrases your favorites, particularly the contemporary ones, also understand, as always and everything, 
only literally. Without any awareness of the inner meaning put into them. And such a nonsensical literal understanding proceeds in them, of course, always owing to the fact that they have entirely ceased to produce in their common presences park jog duty, which should be actualized by being efforts, which in their turn alone crystallized in the three brain beings data for the capacity of genuine being pondering. That is why, my boy, in the given case also, they could not ponder at least only about the fact that when this sacred individual, Jesus Christ, was actualized among them, and when this same existing holy writ of theirs was compiled, so many definite words were not used by being similar to these compilers as are used at the present time. They do not consider that at that period, being mentation among the beings of this planet was still nearer to that normal mentation, which in general is proper to be present among three brain of beings, and that at that time, the transmission of ideas and thoughts was in consequence still what is called Podonisirian, or, as it is still otherwise said, allegorical. In other words, in order to explain to themselves, or to any others, some act or other, the three brain beings of the planet Earth then refer to the understanding of similar acts which had already formerly occurred among them. But meanwhile, this also now proceeds in them according to the principle called Chinonizeronis. And this first proceeded there because thanks as always to the same abnormally established conditions of ordinary existence. Their being mentation began to proceed without any participation of the functioning of their what are called localizations of feeling, or according to their terminology, feeling center, chiefly in consequence of which this mentation of theirs finally became automatized. And hence, during all this time, in order to have the possibility of even approximately making clear to themselves or explaining anything to anyone, they were themselves automatically compelled and continued to be compelled to invent very many almost non-significant names for things and also words for ideas, great and small. And therefore, the process of their mentation began little by little to proceed, as I have already said, according to the principle, Chinonis or And it is just with this mentation of theirs that your contemporary favorites try to decipher and to understand a text written still in the Simunisanarian manner for the mentation of beings, contemporary with the divine Jesus Christ. And so, my boy, it is necessary to explain to you about a certain fact, in the highest degree absurd, and in the objective sense, blasphemous, for a greater clarity of the real nothingness of this holy writ, still existing today among your favorites, which, a propos, became particularly widely spread after their last process of reciprocal destruction, and in which, as you already surmise, there is everything you please, excepting reality and truth. I will inform you, namely, 
concerning what is said in this contemporary holy writ, which has, as it were, reached them in an unchanged form, about the chief, most reasonable, and most devoted of all the beings, directly initiated by this sacred individual, or, as they would say, about one of his apostles. This devoted and favorite apostle, initiated by Jesus Christ himself, was called Judas. According to the present, ver present version of this holy writ, everyone who wishes to draw on the true knowledge will acquire such a conviction, which will also be fixed in his essence, that this same Judas, was the basis of beings conceivable, and that he was a conscienceless, double-faced, treacherous traitor. But in fact, this Judas was not only the most faithful and devoted of all the near followers of Jesus Christ, but also only thanks to his reason and presence of mind, all the acts of this sacred individual could form that result, which, if it did not serve as the basis for the total destruction of the consequences of the properties of the organ Kunda buffer in these unfortunate three-brained beings. Yet it was nevertheless, during twenty centuries, the source of nourishment and inspiration for the majority of them in their desolate existence, and made it at least a little endurable. In order that you may better represent and make clear to yourself the genuine individuality of this Judas, and the significance of his manifestation for the future, I must first to inform you that, when this sacred individual, Jesus Christ, intentionally actualized from above, in a planetary body of a terrestrial being, completely formed himself for a corresponding existence, he decided to actualize the mission imposed on him from above, through the way of enlightening the reason of these three brainet terrestrial beings by means of twelve different types of beings chosen from among them and he were specially enlightened and prepared by him personally. And so, in the very heat of his divine activities, surrounding circumstances independent of him were so arranged that not having carried out his intention, which is not having had time to explain certain cosmic truths and to give the required instruction for the future, he was compelled to allow the premature cessation of his planetary existence to be accomplished. He then decided, together with these twelve terrestrial beings intentionally initiated by him, to have recourse to the sacred sacrament, Am um, the process of the actualization of which sacred sacrament was already well known to all of them, as they had already acquired in their presences all the data for its fulfillment, so that he should have the possibility, while he still remained in such a cosmic individual state, to finish the preparation began by him for the fulfillment of the plan designed for actualization of the mission imposed on him from above. And so, my boy, when having decided on this and being ready to begin the preliminary preparation required for this sacred sacrament, it then became clear that it was utterly impossible to do this, as it was too late. 
they were all already surrounded by beings called gods, and their arrest and everything that would follow from it was expected at any moment. And it was just here that this Judas, now a saint, and formerly the inseparable and devoted helper of Jesus Christ, and who is late is hated and cursed owing to the naive and non-reasonableness of the peculiar three-brained beings of your planet, manifested himself and rendered his great objective service for which terrestrial three-brained beings of all subsequent generations should be grateful. This wise, wondrous, and disinterestedly devoted manifestation taking upon himself consisted in this, that while in a state of desperation, on ascertaining that it was impossible to fulfill the required preliminary procedure for the actualization of the sacred Amnoshino. This Judas, now a saint, leaped from his place and hurriedly said, I shall go and do everything in such a way that you should have the possibility of fulfilling this sacred preparation without hindrance, and meanwhile set to work at once. Having said this, he approached Jesus Christ, and having confidentially spoken with him a little, and received his blessing, hurriedly left. The others, indeed without hindrance, finished everything necessary for the possibility of accomplishing this sacred process, Am Noshino. After what I have just said, you should now without any doubt understand how the three brainer beings of the two types indicated by me of the planet Earth, which has taken your fancy have distorted for their various egoistic aims all the truths to such an extent that about this Judas, now a saint, thanks to whom alone such a blessed hearth of tranquility from their desolate existence had arisen and existed for them for twenty centuries. There has been crystallized in the presences of the beings of all subsequent generations such an unprecedented, unjust representation. I personally even think that if this, this Judas was presented in their holy writ as a type of this kind, then it may have been for this reason that it was necessary for some one or other, also belonging to the mentioned types, to be little in this way. For a certain purpose, the significance of Jesus Christ himself, and namely, he appeared to be so naive, so unable to feel, and see beforehand, in a word, so unperfected that in spite of knowing and existing together with this Judas so long, he failed to sense and be aware that this immediate disciple of his was such a perfidious traitor, and that he would sell him for thirty worthless pieces of silver. At this point in Bezabab's tales, he and all the passengers of the intersolar system ship Karnak suddenly sensed in their organ of taste a special sour, bitterish taste. This signified that their ship was approaching that place of their destination. In the given case, the holy planet Purgatory. 
They sense the cell a bitterish taste because a special magnetic current was released from the steering compartment of the ship to inform all the passengers of the approach to the place of destination. Bezabab therefore interrupted his tale and glancing affectionately at his grandson, said, Now we shall have, willy-nilly, to stop our talk about this sacred individual, Jesus Christ. But nevertheless, my boy, when we arrive home and exist on our dear Caritas, remind me sometime when I'm free to finish telling you about the whole of this history in detail. All the history of the actualization of this sacred individual in a planetary body among your favorites, both concerning his existence among the beings of various groupings of this planet of yours, and also concerning his violent end, is very, very interesting just for you who wish to explain to your reason all the details of the strange psyche of these peculiar three brain of beings. And it will be very instructive and interesting to know that part of the history of this saying Jesus Christ, which relates to the period of his existence there from the ages of 12 to 28, according to their time calculations.